Good evening everybody. I'm about to tackle this hill for the second time today and if it doesn't go so well I'm going to be back tomorrow for sunrise again so I'm getting quite used to this hill. This evening I've come to photograph a poppy field which is literally a few miles away from where I live in Shoreham by Sea. I came here this morning for sunrise, very disappointing conditions and I've got a big hill to tackle here but luckily there's some blackberries on the way for energy, for a little energy boost. Oh, they're nice and sharp. Just what I need to get up this hill. Poppies this year, really interesting. If you saw my video that I made about tripods a couple of weeks ago, actually no, that's a lie. About two months ago, I was complaining at the lack of poppy fields this year in East Sussex and I said I hadn't found any. So since I made that video I've actually found two poppy fields. This poppy field in Lansing I came to two years ago and uh, I was taking some portraits and it works quite nicely I have to say. But I think I'm gonna have to work it quite hard but the good news is this kind of doubles up as a, a second location so if I go up to the top and follow the hill up I've actually got some nice rolling hills to the other side of this as well so today we're going to talk a little bit about poppy fields some of the shoots that I've done over the years uh, it's not an easy subject I'd say it's easy to get a photograph of poppy fields but it's difficult to get a really good photograph of poppy fields I'm also christening a brand new lens well it's a new lens for me anyway uh, two weeks ago I reviewed the Canon 24-105 lenses uh, for Gordon Lang's channel Camera Labs so by the time this video comes out that should be live so I'll put a link up here if you are in the Canon mirrorless system and you're thinking about buying 24 to 105 don't buy it until you've watched my review because they do two lenses and it's interesting how close they are not in price in terms of optical quality so don't go and spend your money until you've seen that review you can probably see it clipped on here I have not taken a single photograph with this lens yet. I'm hoping I've got a good copy. You know, I, I have heard of people saying that they've got dud copy, they have to send it back. Guess you don't really know how good a lens is if you only get one of them, which is uh, nice. I managed to ask nicely and Canon sent me a Canon R6 and two 24 to 105 lenses to test out. It's all about who you know, isn't it? If you're in the Canon ecosystem, and you're thinking about getting an R5 or an R6, I have to say, I just shoot the original R, and they are quite far apart. The R6 is just so fast at focusing, so much quicker at taking photographs. But for landscape photography, you do take a bit of a hit on the resolution, because the R6 is 20, and the R5 is very expensive. But you have to pay a lot of money to get performance and high resolution uh, in the Canon mirrorless system right now. Oh my God, I'm about halfway. There are quite a few reasons why I'm coming all the way up to the top of this field. It's because the poppies are a bit more dense and you've also got some South Downs in the background because just poppy, poppies on their own are a bit boring. You've got to have a bit more to a photograph than just poppies, otherwise it's just, it's just a red image, isn't it? We're still one hour off sunset. I'm surprised I haven't seen any other photographers, but the reason that I'm here an hour before sunset, which is a bit early for me, I normally just turn up with 10 or 15 minutes to spare, which is bad practice anyway, uh, is because when you're photographing these locations in the South Downs, you quite easily just lose the sun behind one of the hills. Half an hour before the sun is actually supposed to set. And uh, that is why I'm here way before I need to. Plus, it just gives me a bit of an opportunity to just chill out, find some compositions. I've got the 24 to 105, and I've also got the 100 to 400. So I've got, I've got it all covered. I've got it all covered. That's why my bag is so heavy. Now I said that I found two poppy fields in total. The other one was out towards um, Ditchling Beacon sort of area. Quite a trek to get to that. And uh, I went there with my friend Louise Welcome. I'm sure she's going to be in one of these videos one day. We went there for sunset we were literally gifted 60 seconds worth of light and then the sun just hit some low-lying clouds absolute disaster i've got a few nice photographs i might include them in today's video uh, depending on how today's video goes 
probably going to include some poppy photographs that I've taken today, this morning, a few weeks ago, over the years. And that's because different locations, poppy fields, I don't completely understand the ecology of it, but they seem to crop up, pun intended, some of the same fields again and again, maybe a few years apart. So the poppies were in this field two years ago and they're back. So it's worth just tagging this location. Uh, maybe in a few years time, poppies will be a bit better, but considering it's August, last year and the year before that and the year before that, I was photographing poppies in June. Something is definitely up with the weather this year. The poppies in this field are very, very low indeed. I'll show you. The poppies are not even as high as thistles out here, look. You can see it's not exactly dense, so I'm gonna to have to work quite hard. If you've seen a few of my videos then, uh, you'll know that I like to shoot into the sun, maybe some F16 with some sun star in the background. Backlit poppies look really good. Side lit poppies look really good. Just come over the top of the hill and there are a few fields over here which have got hay bales in, which is kind of like catnip for landscape photographers. I don't know if I've got enough time to do both of these locations. Great looking scene, but that's not sunset that way. I'm gonna to have to come back in the morning for that. Uh, the forecast is looking good. So this might be a video of two halves. This might be a sunset and sunrise, but the, uh, the poppies are on a west facing field. So I think that's what I need to concentrate on whilst I'm here. Try not to go too far into this field. Don't want to upset the farmers who are literally over there plowing their fields. Generally, I, I do panic when I look at a scene like this, I think. How am I gonna make some magic out of this? Because it all looks very samey. So I'm hoping that putting the long lens on is gonna help me pick out, pick out a small scene amongst all of this. Right, uh, yeah, I'm gonna get the camera out. I'll be honest with you, I was getting a bit panicky there and I didn't think I was going to get anything. But then the sun and the light really started to happen. It's really, really close to the horizon now. Getting a few shots that I quite like with the 100 to 400. I might just lose that sun in a second. This might all be over. Two minutes later, the sun is gone. I have still got half an hour until the sun sets, yet it's just disappeared behind a bank of clouds. Guess I will be back at sunrise then, won't I? All right, end of part one. I'll see you in the morning. I think this is gonna be a bit of a waiting game. The, the, the weather guess, as I like to call it, or the weather prediction, said 13% cloud cover this morning. 95% anyway so this is not going to plan but yeah so I am just going to sit it out wait for the sun to come up and I'm going to be shooting a few landscapes here there are some hay bales and some cows in the distance and maybe they'll look quite good if they're backlit so just got to wait for a gap in the clouds it is going to be a gap last night's sunset did not turn out as I wanted it to and therefore it all became a bit rushed. I didn't actually talk about why I was photographing what at all. But when it comes to photographing poppies, not the same as bluebells because that's under tree cover. But if you photograph poppies or sunflowers, lavender, things like that, I take two approaches. First of all, there's the wide or the, uh, the long landscape shot. That's where you're purely taking a picture of the crop. So ultimately you're looking for foreground, maybe something of interest, just say one sunflower or a yellow flower right in the middle of the poppy crop and then, or maybe a focal point in the distance. Uh, so over the years I've photographed poppy fields in various locations. Some of them work well and some of them don't. Here is a particularly tricky spot because you've just got some fields and the only interest is the undulation of the land. So what I tend to do is I get a long lens out 
that might be a 70 to 200 or a 100 to 400 and that way you can compress perspective it looks like the crop is actually a lot more dense than it really is where you get land kicking up and down you the density of the crop changes which if it was a poppy field then you would get dense red and then slightly shallower red and it just creates interest in your image so i would be shooting like most of the time f8 f11 if you're shooting with a long lens then some of the foreground might be out of focus so if you were that fussed about it you could do some focus stacking i might do that on a seascape where i've got a rock or something in the foreground which i actually want people to look at but if it was a crop i'm quite happy for some of the foreground to be a little bit out of focus shutter speed is whatever it needs to be and then iso as low as possible uh, last night i was hand holding it because i could see that the sun was about to disappear i didn't have much time at all that that's the first approach to photographing poppies or similar crop second thing is um, I might bring a macro lens or just zoom in to one interesting poppy or things seem to look better when you use odd numbers so I might have one poppy or three poppies of course there are loads of different ways you can explore this you could do long exposures you could do a bit of intentional camera movement all of these things but today I'm just keeping it simple I'm shooting the landscape I'm shooting the light maybe if I don't get any good images from today, I'm gonna to share some of my favorite images of poppy fields over the years. And I would say that the only one that has actually made it into my portfolio has been a shot that I took at Falmer. I've got sun just popping behind the, uh, the horizon and it's just got a lot of contours to it. I think that's why I've kept that in my portfolio, which is on my website. I've been taking photographs of poppy fields every year and I don't think I've got a shot that has beaten that. You might, you might think differently and that's fine. I've completely overlooked if you're taking portraits. If you're taking portraits then the poppies would be the backdrop. But because poppies are inherently just open in a field, if you're shooting portraits, the poppies are normally out in June and July. So if you're looking for sunrise, I doubt that your portrait subject will want to get up that early. Sunset is normally about nine o'clock. It's slightly unsociable. Anyway, that's enough talking. I think I'm just gonna sit back and wait for the sun to kick through the clouds. I think there might be some hope. Starting to get some color in the sky. This part of the video has nothing to do with poppies. I get that. I have to photograph here. I've got to wait maybe 45 minutes after sunrise before the poppy field actually gets some sunlight. So I thought, whilst I'm here, might as well appreciate the sunrise. This is all happening very, very slowly. The, the sun is on me and the immediate foreground, but not on the scene. It's literally just the clouds on the horizon. <laughs> look, look at this. Do you know what? It doesn't matter about the poppies anymore because this scene is absolutely kicking off. It's not mist, it's hazy and the sunlight is just it's just all in the right place it's all in the right position you've got the hills the light you've got some hay bales some cows i'm gonna stop talking take some more photographs because i've not had a scene like this in a long time <laughs> being 100% honest with you when I was driving here this morning I thought I might as well just quit look at the conditions it was 95% cloud cover versus the prediction of 13% but I'm glad I sat it out sometimes you're just gonna sit at your location 45 minutes before you actually see the Sun but don't be afraid to just change the plan this video is about shooting poppy fields but I knew that there was another composition nearby. Poppy Fields wasn't working out. Scrap that idea and yeah, go wherever the light is. So that's what I did this morning. Sunset turned out to be a bit of a fail. The sunlight is just starting to skin the top of the Poppy Fields now, so I'm heading back. It might come as a bit of a surprise to some of you. I actually go out a lot more than I film. I would say I film about 20% 
of the landscape photography um, outings that I do. And there's a good reason for that because coming out and filming these videos is a lot harder because you're not just concentrating on the photographs, you're concentrating on bringing out two cameras, two tripods, maybe you're doing a time lapse, maybe you're flying the drone as well. So you've got the extra baggage of all the kit, plus you can't just turn up at a location and start filming. You've got to think about the story, how you're going to, yeah, essentially how you're going to introduce a video. It's much harder for me to go out and make a video about a location than just going out and taking photographs of it. Uh, so yeah, just thought I'd fill you in on that. I actually go out five times more than I show on this YouTube channel. But you can see here that the sun has just come up over the top of that hill and it's just side lighting the poppy field that I was in at sunset. Frustratingly, I'm gonna to have to call it and say that's it for today because the clouds are ruining my day. Well, they kind of made the day at the sunrise, but now they're just ruining it. They're ruining all the fun. These uh, poppies all around me deserve some sunlight. And realistically, it's an hour and a half after sunrise. The light is not great anymore if it were to come out from behind the clouds. So I will therefore call it a day. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video.